This small form factor PC is the solution to all your space problems. No longer do you need that bulky PC tower and this will replace what you have. My name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire and this is the Intel Nook 12. Now, some of you may have already heard about the Nook before, and some might be seeing this for the first time, but stick around and let me tell you a little bit about this form factor PC and how much power is packed into it. This model I have right in front of me is the bare bones model machine, which means you can buy any amount of RAM, up to 64 gig, and the hard drive space you need, and you can just go ahead and install that. It has the capabilities, as I mentioned, up to 64 gig of RAM, and can have two M2 SSDs inside it as well. With this tall version, you also have a two and a half inch drive bay on the back of it as well. The tech specs of this is a 12th gen i7 processor, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 and Intel integrated graphics. To take a look inside, there's four screws on the top, you just undo them and take this out. Once you've taken it out, we have the bay for the SSD just in here and there's some slots. You have some thermal pads for the SSD and the smaller SSD which are located just here and we have 64 gig of RAM which I've just placed inside here. Under the memory, I'll quickly take this out. Under this memory, we have the Wi-Fi 6E card just here. <clears throat> now, if we take a look at the I.O., we have two USBs on the front here, three and a half mil jack and the power lead. On the side we have some vents, on the other side there's a vent and a lock just for that to keep it secure and on the back is where the most important stuff is. So we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two HDMI ports, one USB 3, one USB 2, power lead and a 2.5 gig port. So these are now coming with 2.5 gig, you no longer have to have just the 1 gig Ethernet on the back of these. We take a look at what comes inside the box. We have the Nook that we've seen already. We have a Visa mount that you can go ahead and mount this to the back of the monitor or even on a wall if you wish to do so. We have some additional screws for the two and a half millimeter drive and we have a power lead. Now, Intel, please explain this one thing to me. The one thing that's not included in this box and they're taking the direction of some other companies out there that have already started doing this and they do not include a power lead. So if you buy this model, do make sure you buy a power lead or you have one spare at home because there is not one inside this box. I'm gonna go ahead now and get Windows 11 installed on here. So I've got Windows 11 installed on here and I'm gonna go ahead and run some benchmark tests to give you some understanding of how powerful this machine actually is. I'm telling you, this PC is great for productivity, but if you're a gamer, probably not so much. However, if you were to add an eGPU via Thunderbolt, you could probably make this work for you. Now, if there are any companies that want to send me one so I can test this, my details are in the bio, so check them out. But back to my point, we ran a couple of benchmark tests to see how well this would perform. We ran a Geekbench test for both the single and multi-core performance and a Blackmagic disk speed test. For the Blackmagic speed test, we put in a hard drive, which was a crucial P3 SSD. According to the spec, it can handle up to 5,000 megabytes per second read speed and 3,600 megabytes per second write speed. So let's take a quick look at the results and you can see that it's running in at 3,230 for read and 3,533 for write. So the write speed is almost maxed out but the read speed doesn't get close. Now for the CPU test on the Geekbench 5. The single core comes in at 1563 and the multi core comes in at 8496. Right now these are just numbers so let me tell you what they mean. In fact, let me show you. Just to give you an idea of how high these big Geekbench scores go, here are the top 10 results for the single core and multi core processors and a similar sort for the processors around the i7 for both the single core and multi core. Now don't get fooled by these top results as these results for the Intel i7 are actually pretty decent. This PC will comfortably be able to do your everyday tasks as well as also good for the power users. Now don't get fooled by these as these results for the Intel i7 are actually pretty decent. The PC will comfortably be able to do your everyday tasks, also very good for the power user too. The use case which I think is great for these Intel Nooks is using them as a home lab. So you can turn them into a hypervisor so you can run your virtual machines. So you can go ahead and install Proxmox, VMware or even Hyper-V. 
So my thoughts on the unit itself, I love the compact size of the nook and being practically be able to hide it behind the monitor for a minimalist look. The bare bones unit itself allows you to expand and add what you need in terms of RAM and storage wise. It has a decent amount of IO and the two and a half gig ethernet, which is coming more and more common. The expandability is great for a machine of its size and the ability to be able to add an eGPU gives you that extra boost of power. There are a few things that I think are not that great about this. And the first thing is the cost. It's probably gonna set you back a little bit more than the standard desktop for the same spec. However, it doesn't have the same small form factor. The other thing is Intel has started stripping out the power cables in here. So you're having to supply your own, even though you are probably paying a little bit of a premium for these. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and what you think of this Intel Nook 12. Do you have one? Would you buy one? And while you're down there, give me a like and do subscribe also as well. I hope you found this video useful. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.